Welcome to an ARF practical workshop video. My name is Nico Tripsevich from the Archaeological Research Facility. A hundred years ago, a large fire burned through Northside, a neighborhood north of UC Berkeley. And if you visit the neighborhood today, you can see that many of the architectural changes that were enacted after the fire, such as stucco buildings with tile roofs, are really visible in the area that burned compared to the area that didn't. I built a web map mobile web map to help people visit the neighborhood and get some information about the architectural changes. Um, and in this short video, I will describe how I built the web map using Leaflet and QGIS. And um, in this video, I'll describe where I found the parcel and historical data, how I brought it together and represented it in QGIS in preparation for exporting to Leaflet using the QGIS to web plugin by Tom Chadwin. Um, I host it on GitHub pages, but other hosting will work. And it's a, a, an entirely open source workflow, no special mobile apps, and for iOS or Android. And uh, it can be embedded in a web page because it's all open with no licensing fees. So let's turn now to the actual web map. So as you can see, it's being hosted here at uh, github.io on GitHub pages. And what we've got here is a few layers. Um, we have the actual polygons that were derived from household house footprints. And then I was able to determine the year built um, attribute and color them appropriately where brown is pre-fire like the brown shingles of Berkeley. And, this peach color is the meant to reference the um, stucco and tile that the newer buildings tended to have. I also included the footprints of some old buildings. You can see it in particular in this former um, neighborhood that became a school yard when they built this large school where I actually went to kindergarten. Um, and they built this in after the fire in 1926 or so. It's a landmark building and this schoolyard has these footprints underneath the um, concrete. So <clears throat> if you click on one of these, you get a pop-up. And this one was post-fire. According to the data set I acquired, it was built in 1925, right after the fire. And then I was able to build this Street View link. If you click it, it takes you to a web browser in Google Street View. You can see the schoolyard today. And over here is the house that was built after the fire. So back to the web map, we have some other layers I'd like to show you. We have the open street map back there. We also have, let me turn off the polygons. There's open street map. We have a Google hybrid layer that came out of QGIS. And we have an air photo from 1922 that was uh, flown by um, George Elmo Russell. And the original negatives are not available, only this printed half-toned image. So those are that could be improved if we ever get the negative. And here's a water company map that relates some of the same information that I'm showing here. The black buildings were burned. The white uh, uncolored buildings survived the fire outside this fire perimeter. So I've basically created a digital version of this map. And I've got it to referenced here and exported into Leaflet. I'll show you that process. So let's go to QGIS. Here we are in QGIS 3.2. And uh, I've got these various layers. I'm going to show you how I organized this project. First, I brought in OpenStreetMap, Google Satellite, Google Hybrid, this Stamen background layer, which I didn't use. Um, we have some other imagery that I didn't end up with, some map layers I didn't end up using in that uh, leaflet project. But these were generally brought in using the Q, the uh, quick map services with the uh, more, more services pack enabled. The uh, let's discuss a little more the the placement of these buildings here. These don't appear in the current OpenStreetMap, where did I get the footprints? Well, I geo-referenced some Sanborn maps. So you can see here, this is the Sanborn 1911 for the area, and that's the locator map. 
So that tells you number 31 or th 32 is the neighborhood in question. So I found that one and it's 33, it's here. And that shows the, the households that I then digitized like that. Um, and the, uh, so Sanborns were used. What, what else we have um, parcels. So I, so in order to shade the, the map, I had to get the year uh, that it was, that each structure was built. And those came actually from parcels. Those are the parcel boundaries there. And unfortunately, the county website for parcels, you can download a lot of information from the county. I'll show you that site quickly here. They have an ArcGIS online site. And here's Berkeley, their parcel map. You can click on any of these. And these are all the attributes they provide but they don't actually show year built. Some counties do, if you're working elsewhere in the United States, um, check your county assessor and parcel map, and you may have year built directly in here, which is very handy. I had to get it from a different uh, source from the historical society they had it, or the city, I think. And then I used the APN number to join it uh, to the, the parcel. So that's how I got year built. The um, TGIS has this project. Um, notice that I didn't use just parcels. I used the household footprint. Those came from Microsoft produced a digital map of all the buildings in the US, building footprints, which is something like 129 million building footprints. And it's actually been pulled into to, um, to OpenStreetMap. So you can either download it as GeoJSON from the Microsoft GitHub repository or use this feature in OpenStreetMap to, you know, my goal was to get these footprints that you see as polygons in QGIS so that I could then um, connect attributes from the county, the year build attribute, and then um, color them appropriately and export them to leaflet. So I did that by using this quick OSM plugin for QGIS3. And I simply, I, I panned and zoomed to the proper zoom layer by going to the um, current extent. And then I, I use, you know, I pick the attributes for building and there's some quick query, there's query history. You can, you can um, find some presets that will help you get the buildings and other urban features that you may want and pull them down locally from, from OpenStreetMap so that you can use them in your GIS project. <clears throat> then I had to link the parcels to the building and I also needed a, uh, a single point in order to generate the open, the uh, Google Street View link. So I'll show you how I did that. If we look at the attribute table for my, for my polygons, what I ended up, you know, there were many attributes I didn't need. What I ended up leaving was the OpenStreetMap unique ID and then some classification things that I might end up using like a building amenity, um, the APN is important. That's the unique ID connected to the parcel. And then I left the address as well as the a few other things about the structures that may be of interest. Then I created, well, I got the year built. And as you can see, some of them didn't have year built. So I um, the ones that I drew the footprint, um, I had to just assign them to the pre-1923 because they were buildings that were lost, like the ones in the school ground. The uh, the other thing that was a little bit tricky was creating the street view link. So I thought I'd show you how I did that. What street view requires is simply a URL like this, and it's, it's all the same until that equal sign. And then what you need is a single point 
in latitude longitude WGS 1984 coordinate system and datum. So I just had a single point um, centroid in the parcel polygons generated, you know, you convert parcel to point. And then I um, use the dollar sign X and dollar sign Y calculation to create new columns. And then I appended them, uh, you know, co columns for lat, col columns for long. And then I appended them to this uh, information and joined them or yeah, concatenated them into a single field. <clears throat> and that's our URL. All right. Let's move on to leaflet. Um, I created a leaflet map using QGIS to web, this wonderful tool from Tom Chadwin. You have a choice of open layers or leaflet. Open layers was recently updated and it's very feature rich, but I'm making a fairly simple viewer here. So I use the leaflet viewer and there are a few things that are important to um, to do when you're exporting to leaflet. So I'm recording this in part to remember what I ended up using. So first of all, you want to prepare your data for leaflet export by doing a few things that are really using the infrastructure like in QGIS. So here in, for example, the way that we label the layers is determined by the settings in here in for example, here, the layer name, this is what's gonna appear in my leaflet web map. The field attribute form, these attributes, these are all the attributes in the structures vector file. And if it's hidden, it doesn't appear. So many of these things like the building area, I didn't want it to appear. So those are all hidden, hidden, hidden. The year built, uh, this one, the string, I wanted this, to use this one because I didn't want a comma in my year built number. So I converted it to string and that one shows, but the, the original numerical year built doesn't show. Okay. <clears throat> and then uh, let's go ahead and export. So I do want the fire area, that's that thick red line, but I don't want a pop up. I do want it visible. Structures is the one that I want to have pop up. So it's visible with pop ups. And here's my fields. I have inline labels, street view, year built. But notes, I added that later. And you know what? I'm going to go back and turn it off, just like I mentioned, because it's a new field I just added. So I have not hidden the widget. So there I go. I'm going to hide it and close that back to export. <clears throat> so here we are. This one, uh, the, again, the fire boundary, it didn't, it didn't store my choice, you see, so I have to uncheck pop-ups. Now the, the notes is gone. And, oh wait, this is the fire area. Here we go, structures, notes is gone. Street view, I'm gonna have an inline label. That means it's on the same line as the actual value. And then if we go down that water company map I showed you, that's a kind of a analog version of the same thing. I had the entire one ready to export, but it, it turns out GitHub limits you to 15 megabyte files, which, you, which is generally gonna be rasters. Those are the big ones, right? So I had to, trim it. And I was pretty close to 15 megs. It was um, like 18 megs. And so I thought, oh, I'll just clip it down. So I, I used the uh, raster clipping function and I clipped it to my, uh, my, just to the fire area, which, you know, I lost the perimeter information, but it wasn't very important. So that's what this one is. This is the, the same map, but clipped to the area we need, but no pop-ups. And I also don't want people to have to see it. I want it available upon demand, but not visible by default. So that uncheck this. Same goes for the air photo, the Russell 1922 Nadir air photo in the 3857 web Mercator projection is, um, I don't want it to show by default. And it was too big again, it was more than 15 megs. So I created a clip of it right here 
and I want to export it, but I don't want it visible by default because it's slow to load. And I just want it to be available if people want to, you know, pause and let it load. <clears throat> Scrolling down, the only other thing from my project that I want to include is, well, let's include Google Hybrid. That's the Google satellite uh, from Quick quick map, map services, but with street labels, the street names are, are burned on there. That's Google hybrid, but again, uh, no pop-ups and not, not visible by default. The one I want visible by default with no pop-ups is OpenStreetMap. And that's that one is vector-based, so it loads quickly. And of course, it's, um, it's the right amount of detail for a background. And it includes the footprints actually, so that's, you know, the same footprints I'm using. So that's a nice uh, conjunction. And then for some reason, it keeps trying to enable this one, the Sanborn 1911 that I showed you that I georeferenced. I don't want it available in there. So I uncheck that. Now let's look at some of these other settings. <clears throat> I'm going to have the address search available. And these are my layers. Geolocate user, that's going to create a little icon, the droplet icon on the left that allows uh, the user on a mobile device, like a tablet or a phone, to have their GPS location, to have the map zoom to their GPS location. The, um, okay, so the preview just loaded. And I believe that the zoom level that we choose here defines how zoomed in the leaflet map is. Oh, it's doing the collapsed layers list. See how this is an icon? I found users don't know that there's so much under there and sometimes they never they never open it. So if there's room, I tend to want it expanded by default and just kind of keep it short and to the point because uh, that way when it's expanded, it'll be obvious to be users. One other important thing to note is that um, the template is set to full screen. I found that when it was on canvas size, which is the default that it will open with when you first use this plugin, many of these things on the right side of the screen are actually off the screen on a tablet or phone. So uh, that's the way to solve that is to make it template full screen. One other thing to note is that my project is in EPSG 3857, which is also known as Web Mercator. And that is ideal for exporting to a web map like Leaflet because you're using the, the zoom, I mean, the you're using the projection and coordinate system that you will be um, using on the web. So here we are with our, our um, preview, it looks good. Now, one thing that's important to check, especially if you move your QGIS project around between computers, for example, um, I've opened this on a, on a work computer. Right now I have it on a laptop and the path can change, but QGIS to web stores the old path. So here it's gonna try to export to a different user and it, in testing previously, it was creating an error. So. I have found that where it wants to go is into this app data um, location. Well, I'm gonna try to just put it into documents, Let's see what happens. Settings, I generally don't change, but this help has a lot of information. And in fact, if you, um, if you, end up having issues, I suggest just exporting multiple times. I think I exported this map a dozen or over a dozen times before I solved the various problems I had with the export and it produced something I liked. So there it is, you can see the, the PNG, it opens the web browser immediately and you can see the zoom level, the layers, I always, turn these off and turn on the different layers and make sure it's doing what's expected. There's the water company. And finally, let's zoom in and have a look at some of these pop-ups. There it is, 2580 Hillguard. 
click the link and it takes you to open street, uh, Google Street View. There it is. Uh, one, one further thing to note is that these are viewable in um, on a web page. And I've, I have an example here. I embedded it in, this is a Drupal 7 backdrop page that I started to write up about the fire. And here it is embedded, dynamic map embedded in a content management system. Thank you for watching.